Hello to all our viewers. We are in a special program of Kabbalah for the student about the Days of Atonement. We are a few days before and today we will want to understand the internal meaning of the Day of Atonement. We will read together a few of the special prayers written by Kabbalists uh, for Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and we will uh, figure out their inner meaning. So you can mail us questions through Kab.tv and we will ask them during the lesson. So Rav Lightman, we always start Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, with a special prayer called Kol Nidre. And I would like to start from the first part that we read there. It is said on the opinion of the place and the public in the meeting of above and below, we allow to pray with the criminals. Uh, this is how we start the Day of Atonement with criminals uh, above and below. What does it all mean? Uh, we can talk about that sentence, uh, the entire lesson. Well, first of all, Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement, well, we talked about it a lot this year, actually. We talked a lot about the month of Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, how we see it uh, from the perspective of Kabbalah. Well, Yom Kippurim, Judgment Day, as it is called, but to what do we judge ourselves? Everyone has to understand that all in all we sentence, we judge ourselves toward that condition that the Creator puts before us. The Torah puts a very simple condition before us that the rule of the Torah is love thy friend as thy self and only with respect to that rule we have to measure ourselves. So, meaning what we have in our life here in this world, in the corporal level, in the relations between us, in family, at work, in between people, uh, about everything that we have, the Creator says, I wish they left me and kept my Torah because the light in it is the light that reforms. Love thy friend as thyself is the great rule in the Torah. I've created the evil inclination, I've created the Torah as the spice because the light in it is the light that reforms. Everything comes uh, to one reason, to reveal the evil in us and the evil in us. We always have to reveal it towards a love for the others or hate for the others, as written. What is Mount Sinai, a mountain of hatred? Because hatred was revealed there, as written in the book of Zohar as well. When we come to unite, to connect the uh, students of the Zohar, the students of Rabbi Shimon, and then while they open up the book of Zohar, the hatred between them is revealed. How can it be for such great people that hatred is revealed? So in high degrees we also reveal the hatred between us. So we have to understand that our entire uh, calculation, the entire sentence, judgment, the entire judgment day, which is Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement, is only with respect to love or hatred towards the others. This is what the Creator is demanding us, and towards that way we have to measure ourselves. Therefore, the entire fulfillment of uh, uh, Yom Kippurim are the prayers. So we have to understand from the beginning of the Day of Atonement to its end, all the prayers are actually when we sentence ourselves how in different ways we were criminals and we are still, perhaps, and to the extent that we want to rise from that degree of hatred towards the others and we feel that we're incapable of doing it in our own forces. Rather, we're confident that if we will ask and precisely about that, then certainly the Creator will help us and will correct our ego and uh, will shift us from hatred into love and by this we realize the great rule of the Torah. What does that mean? It means that in the receiving of that light, that force from above which corrects us from hatred into love, we are rewarded of coming closer to the Creator and by this of course we are already in a world which is completely good 
And in our world, also in family, work, family, and everything else, everything will get along as well because corporality depends entirely on spirituality. And everything that we have in this world comes down from above. As written, there is no grass uh, below that doesn't have an angel from above, a force from above that strikes it and tells it to grow. So we have to take care of this angel for this force because this is where the force is coming from and do not worry about the grass. So we have to worry about a connection with the angel, with the spiritual forces. So when we're talking about those prayers like Kol Nidre, uh, releasing ourselves from all the vowels and to remove uh, from ourselves the past, doesn't matter uh, which forms we wear in. And we're not going to talk about all our commitments that we have given before and all the uh, sufferings and everything that we have. But we are asking to start a new page. Seemingly what happened till now doesn't exist. This is what we want from you. This is what we want you to do for us that the entire evil, but again, what is the entire evil? The entire evil from me that can uh, burst towards the others, and that is called all the wicked in me, all the transgressions in me, this is only towards the others, against the love of uh, love thy friend as thyself. I want them to be seemingly gone, they didn't exist, they don't exist, and they won't exist. Make a clean, fresh page out of me. First of all, about the past, this is how we start the Day of Atonement. Therefore, people think that this prayer comes from the people in Spain, in Europe. No. Uh, we are the one who were forced to be under our ego, our egoistic desire, and therefore, when we acted... Uh, from its pressure and its control, then now we're asking, greet us from that once and for all. So there is a question. Actually, we start that thing with a prayer that we're asking, the opinion of the place, a assembly of above and below, and a permission to pray with the criminals. These are sublime things. No, no, but this is the question. But we are the criminals. So he is going to ask for forgiveness, if not the criminals. Uh, these are the criminals in us. Man includes the whole world in him. We have a little bit of righteous in us, and the righteous in us is that we have come to the recognition of evil. And from the recognition, we are looking at the good. And from the good, we are looking about the evil. Man is always comprised from both. So through the scrutinies and the study, and through our work in the group, and through wanting to connect together. We wanted to reach the love of the others. We have reached a state where we see that we're incapable of doing so. And then, from that state where we want to but we're incapable, that includes both the wicked and the righteous in each of us. My nature is evil. I don't want to connect with the others. And through the right study, I have developed in me a tendency that I do want to connect. So for, I'm, I'm comprised from both of them. Therefore, we're asking to pray with the criminals, the criminals in us, which we want to transcend above them. Truthfully, the prayers are very profound. We are not asking about those criminals, about those wicked, to disappear from us. We want to transcend above them. We want to repent them. That means that the hero amongst heroes turns his enemy into his lover. Therefore, our entire tendency is to do prayer with the criminals with an assembly of above and below in Bina and Malchut of the world of Atsilut, so that we will connect the Creator and the Shechina together, and we are capable of doing so, and precisely by it being included from two opposite forces of nature, we are capable of coming to the correction and to connect both of them together both the good and the evil and to make them as one therefore this entire prayer opens up for us the gates and until the locking the ending there is a sequence of one prayer so perhaps we will read something from that 
with some part from that prayer. Yeah, but he wants to ask something first. We have questions from the internet. Daniel from Kfar Saba is asking about what you have explained on Kol Nidre. Isn't it uh, d doesn't the creature make it easier for me for him when he's asking the creator to forgive him? No, 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 no. We don't ask the creator to forgive us. Uh, this is what the common people see. What should I ask forgiveness for if I didn't create myself? The creator says by himself, I have created the evil inclination. And then he says, but I also created the Torah, the spice. And then there is a question. If I reveal the evil that he created in me, then why should I f ask uh, for forgiveness? He is supposed to ask me for forgiveness for creating me the way he did. But the thing is, is that we didn't try to bring ourselves from all the opportunities that we were given into goodness. For that, I seemingly asking for forgiveness, that I'm incapable. I have revealed that I myself could have Meaning, after he gave me the good and bad and the opportunity to do something by myself, and I saw that I can't, this is what I'm asking forgiveness for, because that is on my expense already. And not for the preliminary nature that I have, meaning my beast. This is one thing. Well, let's put it this way. If we're talking about it in the society, it's much easier and clear to us, because we engage in the society always in reaching love, as written from the love of the creatures to the love of the Creator. And then, when I yearn, and for it and I'm lazy and again I'm yearning and again I'm being lazy so here is my work where there are many situations I'm going through where I didn't mm, exhausted myself so I have the ability from those points to ask for forgiveness otherwise on my expense well first of all I have to write the transgressions on my account this is what I have to do first. The wicked in the Torah, these are great people. Yes. So why is it written in such a way, all the prayers? All the prayers are written in a, in a form that we have seen, uh, we did this, we did that, forgive us. Of course, we did this and we did that, now we're fasting for it, we don't wear uh, shoes, leather shoes, we don't do many things which are between us and the Creator, and not between us and others in any way. Yeah, because the others is the same force of bestowal for me. When I relate to the group, I don't relate to you or to your friends or other friends. I relate to the group as to a place where we reveal the Creator in the connection between us. As written, the mitzvot between men and the place, meaning between men and the Creator. This is what we build. We build a connection between us where the Creator is revealed, the force of bestowal, the general force of bestowal. And therefore, uh, of course I pray to that force from which I anticipate, I expect the change to come to me. Rather, who else should I pray to? I cannot pray to my friends. They can supply me with such forces. I understand that only the connection between us will reveal between us the inner force, which is called the Creator, the force of the general. So the only force that exists in the reality and sustains everything and builds everything. And this is the force I'm turning to, and I have the opportunity to turn to it, to come to it. If I connect to the others or try to connect to them in such a way that I really want to be as one man with one heart, then I attain that force which is inside my efforts even though I haven't reached unity yet. Therefore, our prayers are only in that direction for that point. You're right. Right, when saying that people don't really understand those prayers, those prayers were written by the people of the great Knesset. They were all in a very high spiritual degree, but they also knew because they were uh, they lived right uh, uh, before the destruction of the temple. They knew that soon there will be exile, and they had to compose such addresses to the Creator so that people during the exile will use it. 
in the ordinary way, even though they don't understand what the prayer is all about, as a custom. And those who want to transcend from the exile into redemption, meaning to reveal the Creator, then he will read and understand what the prayer is all about. And for him, the prayer will be... He will understand it and the intentions behind it, which they have inserted into the prayer, the people of the great Knesset. There is a change of perception that we have to do before we pray. So can you summarize it into one sentence? With which thought should I come and pray in Yom Kippur? All our prayers are only about one thing, that I will come to love the others. Because all in all I was given the Torah in order to come to love the others. Love thy friend as thyself. This is a great rule in the Torah. This is the rule. I was given the Torah so that through the light in it, the force in it, through it, I will come to love the others, period. So I have hatred. And I don't know it yet, but I have to reveal it. And you also read, uh, reveal that hatred through the right study. And then through the right study and acting in the group, as we are being taught, we have to reach love. Why in the group? Because we can't do it with all the entire humanity to spread that much. Rather, I have a group. It's even written the minority of majority is two, or even in a group of ten, as Rabbi Shimon teaches us. Then, in such a way, we come to realize, to the realization of love, and there is no more to it. If I'm going to pray, I should know that I won't receive an answer for anything else but for that request, the love of the others, period. And you're saying change of perception? Perhaps this is a change of perception. You know best because you came from there, uh, from the people who pray. Who pray. So perhaps in light of what you've just said, we will read some part of the prayer of Kol Nidre, and you will explain what it means. Let, let's give it a goal. Okay, well, please go ahead. All vows and renunciations, promises on obligations, bonds and devotions and oaths that we have vowed or sworn or that we have promised or to which we have bounded ourselves from the previous Yom Kippur until this Yom Kippur. Let them, let them bring goodness upon us. All these we repent in them. All these shall be absolved, released, annulled, made void and of no effect. They shall not bind us or have power over us. Our vows shall not be vows. Our renunciations shall not be renunciations. And our oath shall not be oath. And we shall forgive all of Israel and the living and among them. Which promises are, are we talking about? Everything in my nature, which I have revealed, from my nature, I'm entirely in utilization, in the serve, uh, in, in hatred for the others, in exploiting the others. And the worse the others feel, I feel myself better. I always examine myself towards the others. And this is not love, rather hatred. And I'm incapable of behaving any other way. So for all those things, I am I'm, I'm asking to transcend above them. This is actually the first prayer. First of all, to transcend, to rise above it. And on the past, I don't want my preliminary nature with which I was born, which the Creator inserted in me, developed in me and all. Well, actually there, uh, I didn't act that much. But that part of nature where I wanted to be good and I tried and I couldn't, for I have discovered not only my evil with which I was born, the corporal evil actually, the human evil. Rather, also the same evil which I have revealed inside the group, as the wisdom of Kabbalah tells us, I have to be in a group and there to try to reach love and uh, unity with others. And then you reveal the evil in you, your hatred towards others. Then it is revealed. Otherwise, you don't know about it. If you ask common people in the street, they won't tell you that they're evil because they don't feel they're evil. They all think that they are in the love of the others. The only question is, if they are in the love of the others, then why don't they reveal the Creator? Because the love of the others is the key, the place where the Creator is revealed in men. 
So it turns out that we are asking for him to rid us from that evil with which we were born and that belongs to him, to the Creator anyway, and also from the evil which I have revealed through my work in trying to connect to others when I wanted to uh, annul my evil by myself. Then I come to a real repentance because I see that I'm incapable of anything. So the Day of Atonement is a very special uh, state because I really want to get rid of my hatred and I know that I am incapable of doing it by myself to come into such a decision. It's a long path because I always think that, yes, I can overcome, I can do something. And also, when I have as a result of that exertion of an effort, I have the confidence and faith that, yes, if I'm asking the right way, then I will receive help and correction. We have a question of Dag from Indianapolis who asks, who asks, how do we know that we forgive to the criminal which was revealed in me? The results. The result is the one who is acting and we are his action. We also have that beautiful song, he is a matter in the hand of the uh, craftsman in Yom Kippurim, we have such a prayer. So we see it according to our matter, our substance, as much as our matter changes through the influence of the life that reforms accordingly, I can see that, not according to anything else. We can read it if you want. This is also a song of the Rabash, which he sings. We have music about it in the internet, so if you want, you can hear all those songs. Of course you can. So let's read uh, the first verse of uh, that song. He is matter in the hand of the craftsman. When he wants, he expands. When he wants, he makes it shorter. We are in your hand. Uh, look at the covenant and don't look at the inclination. Well, there's much more to it, but of course, the creator or the light or the force of bestowal, the force of love, the good and benevolent, well, actually, this is the only force that acts in the reality, and there is none else beside him. Only our work and our ability is to manage it, to really manage it. And this is something we have to come to, to the realization of the condition of my sons have defeated me. My sons have defeated me, meaning we can constantly, like a little kid in our world, he is the head of the family. He determines everything and the entire family evolves around him. So we have to understand that we can be the sons of the Creator. And if we're asking the right way, but the right way, then we hasten times and we hasten his actions and really act according to our request. And this is what we have to do basically and there's nothing special about it. Rather, each of us is capable of doing so and this is what we learned therefore the wisdom of Kabbalah was given to us because we can demand from the Creator to ask him for corrections along the way where to start with uh, this path is spread before us and that path is a path to the love of the others and then the love of the Creator and then eternal life which we have to attain here in this world, here and now. Therefore, the Day of Atonement is such a big, important day. It's not because we can receive receiving uh, forgiveness, pardon, and redemption, and uh, promise for a good corporal life. Of course not. We see that throughout our history, it didn't happen because we are not asking what the Torah is intended for and what the Creator is waiting for. There is a law here, an absolute law, that only the deficiencies which needs to be corrected, which are the deficiencies towards love, towards connection, unity among everyone, only those deficiencies can be corrected. Yes, Yitzhak. On Yom Kippur, many people will go to the synagogue and will pay a lot of money also. And they will pray and ask for uh, 
good uh, income and long and good uh, life and all, you say the, the you say that all they have to do is ask for uh, the love of the others and as a result they will also have good uh, income and uh, good and long life so why isn't it written in the praying then because otherwise no one would have gone to the synagogue don't you understand that but the people of the great Knesset uh, they wrote this prayer especially because they realized that we are about to go to the exile to be in a very long exile 2,000 years almost and it was a very difficult exile with all kinds of threats and great problems which our egoistic system uh, invited on us and it turned the entire humanity on, against us. It is all as a balance of forces between good and evil and the Creator is above them, but still. Although everything is enrooted, everything comes from Him, both Pharaoh and Mo Moshe and Bilam, Balak and Hitler and correspondingly uh, our saints, but still. We had to go through all these exiles, four of them. And therefore they knew that during this last exile, as opposed to the previous exiles we've been to, this last exile will be a complete detachment from spirituality, from the Creator, from the upper force. And we don't know where we are at all. We are completely disconnected from spirituality. And therefore they wrote it the way they did that a person is seemingly asking for his corporal life and for the time being it will give him a drive to go to the synagogue and pay a lot of money and to hold the book of Torah and the Torah uh, for him is a holy book in the closet etc. This is the exile uh, form in which we had to exist until we want to rise from it into sanctity and we have to understand it and to agree with it and it was all fixed to us by the great Kabbalists who with us they were enduring these uh, thousands of years of exile so the, this is the right uh, prayer and the fact that the people are going and asking for uh, things which people are supposed to ask for. This is what I feel. That that too is good. Well, this is still the exile form of a prayer, but still, that's the prayer. And from there, gradually, people grow, and the point in the heart is awakening, the point of connection with the Creator. And then people begin to ask and begin to understand that we shouldn't ask for that. Rather, that the Torah was given not for that, and the Creator is not giving us any troubles. Rather, He is waiting uh, for us to want the real, true correction. So, we are reading in Yom Kippur in the Day of Atonement also about the sins that we are doing, and I would like to read a list and then to ask you a question, if I may. So, we repent and ask for forgiveness for our transgressions about a sin that we have made in uh, knowingly and uh, uh, in the disgregation of uh, the Creator in giving bride food and drink in false uh, oath uh, unfounded hatred on the one hand we say that we are a matter in the hand of the maker and on the other uh, hand you say that we commit the sins and we have to discover something can you explain to us how, how does it work how do we reveal our sins and how does it work I don't think we should talk about it a person who doesn't go through these things in practice inside a group by the study of Kabbalah for them it is still uh, too far away Let's keep it simple. The Creator says, I have created the evil inclination. How do we know that evil inclination anyway? How do I know about that nature? Right? Well, I have to engage in the wisdom of Kabbalah because that brings me the light that reforms. This is the internality of the Torah, the internality of the Torah. That is the light that is hidden in it. And then through the right study in a group, I realize myself the right way towards the love of the others, it is called the love of friends. Then I reveal all those wicked in me, all those bad qualities. So you say the following, well of course the Creator created it, so what should you ask for? Well I ask to get rid of it. 
When I act in, in a group, I discovered that those things, they stand in my way in connecting to others. So I'm asking to remove them away from me. It doesn't matter that he created it. What matters is how much I want to get rid of it, to transcend above that nature. So what do I gain as a result of that desire? I reveal that he made me evil and I want him to remove that evil. To remove that evil doesn't mean to delete that evil. It means to rise me above that evil so that I will be able to manage it. So that from all those evil things, I will be able to turn them into good things so that the angel of death will become a holy angel. So from all the bad uh, inclinations that I have so that to turn them into good, because it all depends on my intention and how I'm using them. All those inclinations, the evil inclinations were given me to me deliberately so that I will be able to use them. So that is the new thing? Yeah, that is the new thing. But when I reveal when I, that I want to invert them and when the light illuminates over my bad qualities, then I see that they're bad. As written, in your light we shall see light. And then I want to ask and I, and I am asking to turn them into good. Don't erase them. Our ego only comes out from the, is cancelled from the previous uh, utilization and I begin to use it in the opposite way for the sake of the others. So this is what I'm building all and on. There's nothing else except for repentance, the asking, asking for the force to invert myself and then the angel of death will turn into a holy angel. Instead of the opposite form from the creator which I reveal I will have a similar form to the creator meaning to be Adam, man he who resembles the Creator. So there are also the requests that we're asking the Creator. So we're saying that there's the known prayer of Inu Malkenu, our Father, our King. So we say, our Father, our King, do for, your, uh, for the sake of your great name, uh, our Father, our King, show mercy on us, uh, for we have no deeds do justice and mercy with us. So what are we asking for the Creator? Exactly what you're doing is uh, making justice and mercy with us. Uh, but I don't understand what I just read. It means that we are asking for the upper force which created our matter. It created us. And all alone it is he who manages and performs everything. There is only one force in nature which created our matter and he is managing it and we want that that force will be in our hands meaning that I will be able to manage myself through his force my matter is just will to enjoy I have received my matter my will to enjoy in the opposite way from the Creator and through the light and through the force which I now demand from him I am turning my utilization of my matter from reception into bestow from the will to enjoy for myself from the to the will to enjoy for the sake of the others so this inversion this is my entire work I have no forces to do so but I have to acknowledge to get the evil form that I have and to us to turn it into a good form. But along the way, when I examine my evil form, I see the whole void in me in different forms, terrible forms of it, how much I want to harm and use the others and exploit everyone and everything. I reveal all the opposite for forms from the Creator. I receive from Him the force of the light. And through that, I correct all those evil forms and turn them into the opposite forms. Then I'm like a glove. I invert myself into something else, the opposite. And that is called the disparity of forms in the wisdom of Kabbalah. And then I come to a form where I am similar to the Creator, which is the form of bestowal and form of love. Therefore, love thy friend as thyself. All and on, this is the general law. Uh, which we have to keep and for that are all our requests and of course if I'm asking for that then everything our entire life and food and signs and lacks everything will 
get along because everything in this world well of course it all comes from the spiritual world and if I'm asking for the existence of the general law then of course all my pri private small situations of this life everything will get along well we have a question of, from Yossi from Tel Aviv who's asking why do we ask the Creator to do for his name for the sake of his name for the sake of his name meaning for the sake of the quality of bestowal for the sake of the quality of love that is the creator the creator it's not an image it's not a personality that I can turn to God forbid this is not in a picture or a status the creator is equality 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 the quality of love and bestowal the force of love and bestowal which exists and that's it always above time and I turn to that force which is in nature it is hidden from us only so that I will turn to it only so that I will want to use it the right way in order to invert me to turn me to make me suitable uh, to him but uh, there is no me here because if I understand the question I turn to that force so that he will do for the sake of that force no 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 I turn to that force to receive from it a correction I, forces for me to make myself similar to him so I clothe upon myself the same form as his let's draw it well I'm a certain desire over that desire I have some kind of expression of hatred self-love well I want to draw a force upon me in order to clothe on me a different form from uh, self-love or hatred I want to dress on me the form of love I have a love for the others so how can I do that only through the light that reforms that is called all makif surrounding light or Torah it doesn't matter how you call it so my entire work is to reveal that I'm entirely inside a desire and that desire to start with in my preliminary way which I now reveal it is an egoistic desire this is my ego this is my ego and I want to reach my anti-ego to the form of the Creator so if I close that then I'm called Adam man why Adam it comes from the word similar similar to the Creator so all in all, I don't perform anything except for inverting every quality that I have to its opposite. Like the evil force, now it will be exactly the good force in me. Therefore, when I advance more and more, I reveal the evil in me more and more, and I turn it into a better and better goodness yes but I don't understand the mechanism here the Creator created me uh, fucked up and he wants me to reveal how screwed up I am so that I will tell him please invert myself yes so that you will want to invert yourself you're not demanded anything more than to notice those two uh, situations and to prefer the goodness over the evil and of course he is the one acting you are nothing but a discernment which needs to be born from two forms that he stabilizes yeah you are a result of his actions yes well in the prayer of Mincha Yom Kippurim we used to read the story of Jonah the prophet who runs away from the mission that the Creator gave him 
Yeah, it's a very special part of Yom Kippurim, the Maftir of Yonah, Jonah. So I wanted to ask the first question, what is the connection between this story, which is also a fable, of running away from responsibility to everything we just talked about? Ooh, wah. That is a very important and main thing. There is a reason the common people uh, pay, uh, buy and pay a lot of money to read the Maftir of Yuna, and people think uh, that as a result they will come, they will be rich. We understand what is being wealth in the wisdom of Kabbalah when a person comes to a great correction. So why is the Maftir of Yuna uh, brings us to a great correction? Because Yuna, Yuna, this is not just a person. This is a person the Creator turns to and He tells him, go and correct the people of Nineveh because they are evil and you can go and correct them. So see in which degree he is. A person who reaches the degree where the Creator turns to him. We don't tell here stories like uh, kids' stories. We are talking about a Kabbalist who is in a sublime, in exalted height. And it is within his power probably the ability to correct the souls. And for some reason, he's running away from that responsibility. He's incapable, he doesn't want to, he's afraid, he thinks to run away from the Creator. See what a special, special situation we're talking about. And eventually, after many things, he realizes that he has to carry out that commandment of the Creator and he goes to the city of Nineveh to, and he corrects uh, Nineveh, Others, otherwise the Creator will destroy it. So why are we reading that? Well, of course it is according to the order of the Kabbalists, the people of the great Knesset who arranged all the prayers for us. Because in such a great day we can only speak about the love of the others, about the love of the creatures, love thy friend as thy self, and to bring everyone to the same degree of unity between them and between them to the Creator. Uh, to, to repent, meaning to rise to the degree of the Creator, that is the real meaning of repent, that the true correction of the entire humanity is up to us. It's up to us. Here, in such a way, we were given the, this important message by the Kabbalists that this is actually what you have to do. This is the climax of your request for correction, of your correction that should be. That you have to reach a state, as written, all the nations came to him because my home will be a praying home for all nations, meaning we have to correct the entire humanity, the people of Israel, they have to be light for the nations and we're not only responsible for not correcting or correcting ourselves in the love of others between us, in the love of brothers. And we fell from it from the temple. We fell from love of brothers into unfounded hatred and today we have to rise by ourselves from the hate of brothers into the love of brothers and from that height of love of brothers to bring that correction to the entire world and not to be like Jonah who ran away from that responsibility and this story reminds us about our obligation towards the whole world, towards each and every one. Therefore we have to realize as the book of Zohar explains to us as well that on that depends the entire anti-Semitism in the world which will grow bigger and will be revealed furthermore only because we don't carry out the commandment of the Creator to the rest of the world. It's not enough for us to scream for the correction and the connection between us and the love between us. Rather, we have to take care for the entire world so that they will reach the general love and then everybody will be as a clue for the revelation of the Creator. Therefore, this is the main point, the most important point in the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So we have to realize that the correction of the entire world is the demand that should be in the heart of each of us. And if we realize that, that's a sign that uh, he's really asking in the Day of Atonement that request so that the Creator will respond. If we ask for it, then we would have surely he received an answer for that. Otherwise, until we'll come to it, but still we have to understand the Creator 
responds only to those requests which are on the path to the goal that he set and not according to the goal we think we should achieve. But to come to that request for the entire world, this is a very advanced degree. So it turns out that as long as we're not there, these are our sins? Yes, of course. If we fall behind in time, because every time, every moment, there is the measurement of a certain development which we have to be in. And if we haven't reached that yet, then of course, we are still falling behind, and this is on our expense, and we receive uh, a punishment as a result. Yes? David from Jerusalem is asking, what does it mean that Jonah had the ability to correct the souls? Oh, I don't, I, I, I can't get into that. This is how one great soul like Jonah, the prophet, he was a prophet, someone who uh, speaks to the Creator in the degree of hearing or seeing or speaking. These are a connection of spiritual connection. We're not talking about uh, uh, speaking or hearing or... Uh, uh, which are corporal, but when we're talking about those degrees, we have to study. In tests we can uh, mention those degrees, but what good will it do for him, for David from Jerusalem? No, it should come emotionally. What does it mean that I'm speaking to the Creator? It means that I reach a degree where the Creator, in a revealed way, is revealed in me, in the degree of speaking, meaning uh, the illumination of Chochmah. There are Chayot Lelot and speaking. Well, in that revelation, there is the light of Hasadim, the light of Chochmah, and here we're talking about the very sublime revelation, very exalted revelation, which is the revelation of, of the light of Chochmah, of the upper force. Yes? We have another part which we say in Yom Kippurim, and Baal Sulam composed it, Chamol uh, Al Masecha. And perhaps we can hear from you what it means. Chamol al Masecha, forgive your deeds and rejoice for your actions. And those under your shelter will be your righteous. And those who devote for you, you have. Uh... Well, on the Day of Atonement, we go through three degrees. Forgiveness, uh, atonement, and repentance. And the greatest degree is where we reach a state where we can justify the Creator completely for everything He did to us because we see the results of it. We can speak about every soul, how much she has been through in the past, and now it inverts all the transgressions and uh, Malices into uh, mitzvot, meaning actions of bestow, into corrections. How much are all these all our desires in our soul were in order to receive? The soul of each of us includes 613 desires in it. Let's say this is our soul, my soul. And there are 613 desires in it, Tariyag, it's not 613 desires. All those desires, they are in order to receive. I want to receive desires of hatred, self-love. And then... What does it mean to do a mitzvah, a correction, over the entire 613 desires to perform the opposite desire, to use every desire with the intention to bestow? That means that we turn our enemies into our lovers. The fact that I turn myself into my opposite. Well, there's a form of paro and all the wicked and everything. So I turn myself from a wicked into a righteous. If I invert all that into bestow, therefore, how do we become righteous? First of all, we have to reveal, first of all, 
are the wicked in us? That is called the time of preparation. First of all, after we come to the wicked in us, we come to forgiveness and atonement. Then I come to the correction of Hafez Chesed, delighted in mercy to bestow with the intention to bestow, meaning I transcend myself and I don't want to use that evil desires of me at all. Well, in the beginning, the first is a revelation of evil. The second means don't do to others what you hate yourself, to be delighted in mercy, neutral. I don't want to harm anyone. I don't want to do anything bad to anyone else. I perform a restriction over my desires. And the third one is that I turn his enemy into his lover, meaning I reach love. And here I'm only called a righteous, and in love I'm called a complete righteous. This is how we advance. Three steps. And over those three steps, we are talking in the in Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. We have a question from Dor from Haifa. He is writing, we used to bless Gmar Chatuma Tova in the end of prayer. What does it mean, spiritually speaking? Gmar Chatuma Tova, uh, end of uh, a good uh, signature, uh, sort of speak. We have received from the upper force the ability to sign uh, the, the seal of the Creator is truth from Aleph to Taf and Mem in between the letters. The first letter, the last letter Aleph, the last letter Taf and Mem in the middle from the beginning to the end. And Mem is Bina, which is the force of Bissol, which connects those two edges. So when we reach a state where in our... In all our actions, in all, in all our discernments, in everything that we do from now on, everything will be with his signature, meaning with the force of Bina. Bina is called Elohim, the Creator, and through that force, surely we will uh, follow that force, meaning that a person from here onward begins to be a, com a complete righteous. What does it mean righteous? He is in the love, in a complete love of the others without any self-interest. Uh, we have a question from Mary in Herzliya who is asking, what is the relation of Kapara to the custom of Kaparot, meaning uh, killing a turkey? Well, it's a custom like any other custom. We have to understand that the custom of Kaparot is in dispute. There are many who are against it, not, uh, uh, some do it not of, on roosters, rather uh, on, uh, for money and other things. Well, this custom, well, Kabbalists, at least Bala Sulam and Rabash, they used to keep it like the common people, as we were saying. The fact that we keep all those customs with the collective, with the general, although we understand that through the corporal keeping without the intention, as written, a mitzvah without an intention is like a body without a soul. It's a dead thing if it doesn't correct a person. If I don't activate the intentions, here I have to perform 613 intentions. And if I don't activate them, then all my actions are useless. But still, there are more conditions. If we do it together with a collective, some actions then still we are included with the collective and gradually the collective is also awakened with us in existence uh, questions about the purpose of uh, life and even the same actions which uh, they do and therefore we should uh, take part of it and be there therefore we too at least uh, the part of our students which uh, keeps uh, all those corporal actions. Well, we do that. We keep the customs. Well, a custom is a culture of a nation. And it is very important if we keep that framework. And I hope that out of the corporal keeping, one day we will all move together to the spiritual keeping of the customs as it used to be before the destruction of the temple.
So to continue that question about the Khatima signature, we say it in the last prayer of Yom Kippur. What is, uh, what is the last prayer, Tfilat Ne'ilah, locking prayer? Why is it called like that? Well, that's clear. This is the matter of the gate of the tears, if we're talking about it, also about the Day of Atonement and in general. So if a person realizes that all the gates are locked except for the tear gate, then he reaches a state where he's asking and the Creator is responding. What does that mean? Because a person is asking during his life for different things. I want to be healthy, I want to be successful, I want to be rich, I want to be in control, I want to be beautiful, whatever. A person is asking for everything that he thinks that these are signs of success. And then with all his requests, he turns to the Creator. Now, even the most secular uh, person, it doesn't matter, all our deficiencies are always to that light, to that source that created us. Therefore, gradually, in time, during life, during the incarnations, we begin to scrutinize that all those actions Well, they are blank prayers, they are useless prayers. Therefore, when we reveal that I truly have to, rev to pray only for the love of the others, and this is what the Creator wants me to do, this is the source. You have to be as one man, as one force. This is how you will get the force of the Torah. This is how you will transcend into spirituality. And I don't want to hear anything else from you. If I finally come to that point, not only hear about it, rather it is um, carved in my heart, that means that I have reached the tear gate. And then I reveal that I've never received any answer for my request, but the sum total of the request, of the answers I didn't get, they gave me that grief, uh, that pain in the last prayer, in the right prayer for unity, for the love of the others, uh, love thy friend as thyself, and this is what I'm asking for, and then I receive an answer through the Neila, the prayer of Neila. So we've uh, left with two minutes, so we end the entire uh, day of Kippur, uh, next year in the Build Jerusalem. What is the meaning of that sentence? Well, and uh, God is uh, the cre and the Creator is God, and may we do many actions there. The built, constructed Jerusalem, meaning a uh, uh, complete fear, meaning malchut, which connects to bina, the force of my desire, my entire desire, which receives the quality of bestow, which is called bina and complete. So I reach uh, my kli, my soul, which is corrected and similar to the Creator by turning into bestow and love towards everyone. That is actually the, the desirable result of Yom Kippurim, and I hope we'll come to it. Uh, we'll see you in our next program. Thank you all so much.